Welcome to Off the Page, the show where we talk with Colorado authors to get the story behind the story. I'm Stacy McKenzie, a librarian here at Mamie Dowd Eisenhower Public Library in Broomfield. And today we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a legacy author. We have Pam Moore. Pam, welcome on the show. Thanks for having me, Stacy. And we had a relative and in-law of yours yeah. on the show, uh, Stan Moore. Stan Moore is my father-in-law. He is the author of several books. Several. Mm -hmm. And we've had him on a couple times. Yeah, he's a neat guy. He's a really neat guy, real calm, collected, and just always does a good interview with us. Just mm -hmm. lots of deep, great facts. Mm -hmm. uh, and did you tell him you were going to be on the show today? I did. I did. Uh -huh. He was excited. He said, oh, you'll enjoy it. Stacy's a lot of fun. Now, and he referred you to us. Yes. So we're real happy to have you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and uh, what I usually start with is asking authors, if are you an author full time? What do you do when you are not authoring? What a great question. I am primarily a stay-at-home mom. Uh -huh. I find time to write. I also teach group fitness classes, okay. teach group cycling, and I enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. enjoy spending time with my friends. like to get a babysitter once in a while, go out to dinner with my husband. Uh -huh. Try to think what else. I enjoy crafting, but I haven't done it in a while. Okay. I'm a quilter. Oh, have you been busy with something lately? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my children are four and two years old. Oh, so my. They keep me quite busy yeah. all day, some of the night. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we are going to talk about your book, There's No Room for Fear in a Burly Trailer. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting title. Before we talk about specifically about the title, um, I heard about how this book came into being, and it's a really original publication story. Yes. So I'm going to let you start at the beginning and tell us how this book came into being. Okay. Well, the original, ori the, the very beginning of the story, I think uh -huh. it begins before my husband and I met. We okay. met in 2008 and I had just started my blog, whatevs, whatevsblog.com. Mm -hmm. I had just started it maybe six months prior. Mm -hmm. We met at a bar and he called me shortly thereafter mm -hmm. and almost like a confession he said to me I feel like it's only fair that I tell you that I googled you and I found your blog <laughs> and I find it hilarious yeah. so right away a I knew he had good taste <laughs> yes ex uh, definitely <laughs> and B I knew I really liked him because ordinarily when somebody just says right to your face I googled you if you don't like them you're thinking oh okay stalker mm -hmm, mm -hmm. instead yeah. I was flattered he said he liked the blog so fast forward about seven years later, uh -huh. so you know we date, we get married, and this whole time he's telling me, I really think that it would be worth publishing your best blog posts over the year in a book. Mm -hmm. or not over the year, but over the years mm -hmm. in a book. And I kept saying, yeah, maybe, oh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So my birthday rolls around this year, and I knew he'd gotten me a hoodie because I specifically said, I want this hoodie. Mm -hmm. I emailed him a link to the hoodie. <laughs> it came in the mail. I brought it hoodie. in the house and pretended I did not know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he better get you so, the hoodie. So mm -hmm. I'm like a child. On the morning of my birthday, I want to open my presents in bed. I'm opening mm -hmm. my presents in bed. He's got his smartphone out and he's videoing me, which is not really his style, but I didn't think much of it. I open the hoodie and then I realize there's more in this gift bag. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is my book. He went behind my back. Totally unbeknownst to me, he recruited um, these friends of ours who, she's a copy editor, uh -huh. and he is, they're a couple, he's a designer, uh -huh. and he got them on board to design the book, edit out any grammar problems, he had them design the cover, they actually convinced him to make it a little nicer than what he would have actually yeah. Picked. He recruited some of my friends and my sister to mm -hmm. find out, is this a gift that she would want? What do you think we should do for the cover? What should we do for the title? He got blurbs even from writer friends of mine. Uh -huh. he, I, was, I was totally shocked he got an ISBN number for the book. So I just... Legit. I, yeah. And mm -hmm. so the video is now, it lives on YouTube. Uh -huh. You can see it. I am totally shocked. You can see that it's not staged because yeah. I'm wearing pajamas, my hair is going about a hundred directions, uh -huh. and my four-year-old is happens to be on the bed with me, and she doesn't know what's going on, because I'm crying, and she's she doesn't realize that you can cry because you're overwhelmed with an emotion other mm -hmm. than sadness. So that was kind of funny, but the book was a surprise. And you can, I went and saw the video uh, through your website, yeah. 
And I, yes, I have to say, you can tell for sure it wasn't staged. No. <laughs> Love the cupcake pajamas. Thank you. They're adorable. <laughs> and it's great because you really don't say much. You're no. kind of speechless in it. So it, it's really a wonderful video. It, it is. And what a great gift. Unreal. But Unreal. It, it, it spurred some other um, ambitions in you. Yes. Tell me where you're going from here before we get into this sure. specific book. Well, it's exciting. Well, originally my reaction to the book was, oh my God, I'm an author. I can't believe this. Then it was like, what do I do next? This was, I had a lot of emotions the day that I got the book. And my husband said, you know, you can just give a copy to your parents or you can market the heck out of this book. I don't care what you do with it. I just wanted you to feel like you were a legitimate author. Mm -hmm. And so he said, why don't you, before you make any decisions, why don't you actually read the book? <laughs> yeah. So I went ahead and I read the book and maybe I should be embarrassed to admit, I tore through it mm -hmm. in two nights. I was almost late to drop my daughter off at preschool one morning because I was <laughs> reading it in bed in the morning. So I read the book and I was <laughs> enthralled with your own words. I, <laughs> I thought it was a fantastic <laughs> It is. So it is. Since it is. I've published the book, I've put myself out there trying to sell the book, getting it in stores. I'm also launching myself as a speaker. I mm -hmm. spoke at the University of Denver has their annual women's conference. So I gave a talk there, a workshop on imposter syndrome, okay. spoken at my friend's women's group. It's uh -huh. the General Federation of Women's Groups. So yeah. I spoke to their group. I recently gave a talk at Boulder's athleta store mm -hmm. on it was called think you're not an athlete think again what every woman needs to know mm -hmm. so my themes are around confidence specifically women and confidence and athleticism but I could also talk about imperfect mothering which can you be an expert at being imperfect on something because <laughs> I think <laughs> I think I'm an expert imperfect That's mom great. for the past four years that's wonderful. So you, when people blog, they often blog about all sorts of things in their lives. Yeah. And so your husband putting this together, uh, just an adorable story. Did he give you any insight into how he chose the, these specific blog posts? Sure, yeah. Well, up to, I think about 2010, maybe? Because we had originally gotten the idea together and then I abandoned the idea. But at some point, well, before, maybe even before we were married, way before we had kids, when we had a lot of time, mm -hmm. we sat down <laughs> and we made a, a Google Doc that we shared, some Google spreadsheet, where uh -huh. we decided what up to that point were the best blog posts. Mm -hmm. So up to a certain point, we had collaborated. And then after that, when I mentally abandoned the project, mm -hmm. he continued to just add to oh. the pile of what he thought were the best ones. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And the title, There's No Room for Fear in a Burly Trailer. Never heard a title like that before. Uh, how did he come up with that? It's, well, it was, just so you know, it was that or You Could Be Homeless. Oh, that so. was the other title. <laughs> you Could Be Homeless. Thankfully, he collaborated with our friends who said, no, definitely go with the burly trailer <laughs> title. The homeless... <laughs> You can read the book to find out what that's in reference to. Okay. I, right. I have a bad habit of eating anything that I find. Right. Or taking trash off the street that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. So that was what that was based on. But Oh, okay. <laughs> that's where he came up with that. There's No Room for Fear in a Burly Trailer mm -hmm. is the title of one of the stories. Okay. And and so you say stories. Yeah. And, and so once they've been printed form, are you, you feel like they transform to stories instead sure. of blog posts? Yeah. And yeah. what are some of your, how many are in this book? How many blog there posts? There are 76. 76 blog posts. Yeah. Um, share a couple of them with us to give kind of sure. an idea of what we'll find in this yeah. book. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the book sort of compresses all of this blogging, like eight wor years worth of blogging, yeah. okay. into a cohesive book so mm -hmm. it creates you kind of see this arc of my life from single triathlete girl to newlywed to new mom mm -hmm. when I started the blog I was really into triathlons I had just when I started it, I had done my first Ironman which is um, a 2.4 mile swim 112 mile bike and then a marathon which is 26.2 mile run so that was my obsession. So that was what I was mainly blogging about at the start. Mm -hmm. And then I do my next Ironman and then I gradually shift my focus away from that. But mm -hmm. to answer your question, mm -hmm. one of, well, the title story, There's No Room for Fear in a Burly Trailer, that's one of my favorites. 
it's me talking about the first time I took my oldest child, who was one year old at the time, mm -hmm. for a ride in the Burley trailer, which if you're not familiar with what that is, mm -hmm. there's a trailer you can hook onto your bike mm -hmm. and you can put groceries in there. In this case, it was a child. Um, it's meant for children. Okay. You can put anything in there, yeah. <laughs> anything that'll fit. It was my first time riding around with her in the Burley trailer and I had a lot of anxiety and fear about whether it would be safe mm -hmm. and how it would be. And when I started as a road cyclist, I was really afraid for myself mm -hmm. and cars. And I would even go on bike rides with people that I could hardly stand because I didn't want to be alone. You know, I just mm -hmm. wanted to know where do I go? What do I do in traffic? There was this learning curve. Mm -hmm. And over time, I got very, very comfortable with that. But then having a child, you know, they right. say that having a child is like, it's a cliche, you know, wearing your heart outside of your body. Mm -hmm. But it is true. Mm -hmm. And so here I am as a new mom going, okay, I want to have my child experience bike riding with me. Uh -huh. And I want to be able to go with her, not in the car, because I enjoy bike commuting. Sure. But I'm also a little terrified here. Mm -hmm. So I think that story kind of typified my transition from really just being concerned about myself uh -huh. in my triathlons and my stuff to now my life is about somebody else. Wow. So that's one of my favorites. Another favorite is just a funny one. It's the actually the first one. I'm trying to remember what it's actually called. It's, I think it's called I Like Love Derek Jeter. Okay. <laughs> like slash love. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's the story of this date gone awry where I try to pretend I know well, I'm like going out with this guy who he is a Duke med student right oh and he's Jewish right so it's like this he should be the guy for me right, right. I am going to make this date work yeah and I found out that so this was like around 2001 uh -huh. when the this is my only bit of sports trivia that I actually know uh -huh. the Yankees were playing, I think the, whoever they were playing, the Yankees were in the World Series. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand at the time that I'm supposed to be a Red Sox fan, being from Rhode Island and that my whole family yeah. roots uh -huh. for Boston. But so he's a <laughs> Yankees fan. I realized that the date is going to occur during the World Series. So I oh. study up. Excellent. <laughs> I get the New York Times. Uh -huh. I'm reading Sports Monday and I'm educating myself on Derek Jeter and uh -huh. this amazing play, this historic play that he made, which if you're a sports fan, you probably know what I'm talking about. I barely know what I'm talking about, uh -huh. which became painfully clear as we're on the way, me and the guy are on the way to the um, state fair. Uh -huh. And there was no such thing as smartphones at the time. Right. So he's not checking mm -hmm. on his app, right? He says, hey, do you mind if I turn on the radio? I want to check the score. So I pretend that I was dying to know the score too. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to know the score. Yeah, turn that on. And he, he says, I don't remember what he said, but I, I trying to make conversation and show what a big fan I am. Uh -huh. I go, so how about Yeeter yesterday? <laughs> and he's like, what? Like Derek Yeeter yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you mean Derek Jeter? And I'm going, oh my God, how could the New York Times not tell me how to pronounce <laughs> Jeter? I thought it was one of those weird YJ things. So that's one of the stories. That's great. And <laughs> just about my immaturity and like trying to impress somebody oh. that that seemed like the right thing to do. Had just you said, had you pronounced Jeter correctly, this book might have never occurred. Totally. Is that right? Is that it, the moral? Yeah, I guess that is one of the morals <laughs> of the story. Yeah, I know, because I, <laughs> one of the things that inspired me to write was just life is funny. Mm -hmm. Funny stuff happens mm -hmm. and it deserves to be recorded. So yes. that's where the idea to start a blog even and to write even started for me. That's, that's terrific, Derek Eater. Yeah. I'll never hear Derek Jeter and not think Derek Eater now. So that's fabulous. I hope I make you laugh now. <laughs> I really love the idea that this got started from blogs. And Six, seven, eight years ago, you said? Yeah, I started my blog almost, let's see, in August of 2007. And that, that's when a lot of people weren't blogging. That's kind of before Facebook had exploded. Mm -hmm. What made you want to blog? Why did you choose that medium? Well, I was reading a lot of blogs. So like I said, at the time, I was obsessed with triathlons. Mm -hmm. And I was reading a lot of triathlete blogs. Mm -hmm. These people, they spend all their time swimming, biking, running, and then they find even more time to actually write about it. Mm 
yeah. and in some cases brag about it, in some cases just obsess about it. But mm -hmm. Whether the writing was good or not, a lot of the blogs that I read, I didn't care. I just kind of want to know what was going on. So yeah. I was reading all these blogs and going, I could probably tell stories that are just as interesting, if not more. And I, I didn't really realize how much I enjoyed writing. The more I wrote, the more I kind of found my voice, and the more I decided this is something I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very, very gradual process of me establishing myself as a writer, you know, being willing yes. to even call myself a writer. Uh -huh. But blogging planted that seed, and I'm really grateful for that. Now, for your published printed book and your blog posts, who would you say is the best audience that should read these? That's a great question. I think this book would appeal to any athlete, anyone who's ever gotten lost on a, uh -huh. whether it was in the car, a bike, a swim, a run. I get lost a lot. There's a lot of getting uh -huh. lost stories in there. <laughs> getting lost. I think, um, oh, as far as back to the question about my favorite stories, uh -huh. there's one in there, I think it's called How I Almost Died on Vacation. And I got, I got horribly lost during an open water swim in a lake in New Mexico. So you'll have to read the book to find out where that story took me, but it involves getting in a car with a drunk person um, in a <laughs> soaking wet with no shoes and a bikini only. So that was a funny one. That's but, terrific. Um, so if you've gotten lost, I think you'll appreciate my book. Great. If you are into endurance sports, I think you'd enjoy it. Uh -huh. I also think it would appeal to moms who have had any struggle to redefine themselves and what matters to them uh -huh. once their kids came in the picture, which what mom hasn't gone through that. Yeah. So I think this book sort of paints that picture of what's going on in my life at that time. Now you don't just write blog posts, but you write something called flash fiction. I'd love to share what that is with our audience. Flash fiction is it's also called sudden fiction and micro fiction, uh -huh. but it refers to really short works of fiction anywhere from, I wanna say, don't quote me on this, uh -huh. but about 100 to 500 words. Uh -huh. Some have called it a, meeting of prose and poetry, mm -hmm. oh. but it's just really short fiction and I got the idea to enter this contest called the MASH Stories Competition. Mm -hmm. I believe you can find that at mashstories.com. Okay. A friend of mine had written for it. She was also judging for it, so that's how I found out about it. Oh. And as somebody who really never had any serious interest in writing fiction, I think what appealed to me was it's so short mm -hmm. and I could win something. I'm yeah. very competitive. <laughs> So I wrote my first one and they shortlisted it. Oh, so wow. then then the next one, I was like, oh, I'm going to try this again. The MASH Stories in particular has a contest every quarter. It's really fun. They just closed submissions for this most recent uh -huh. quarter, but every quarter they have a deadline. Okay. And then they shortlisted my next one. And then this third one I just submitted and they just rejected it. But oh. it's really fun. It's kind of like... If you're an athlete and you in, and you appreciate the value of cross training, mm -hmm. I think if you mostly write nonfiction, yeah. writing fiction or writing anything else, it's kind of cross training for your brain and your creativity. That's fun. Really and fun. even though you got rejected the third time, you're going to try it again. Absolutely. That sounds like fun. Yeah. And even some of your blogs have been picked up, like HuffPost and yeah. like some other things. Tell us where else you've been published for your blogs, and how do you get there? How did they sure. pick you? Um, it it kind of depends, mm -hmm. but originally. I, I think the first place that I published something from my blog, outside of my blog, was a website called Divine Caroline, which I don't even know if it exists anymore. But that was as simple as going to their website and finding out who deals with submissions, emailing that person, and saying, hey, here's my work. I hope you'll take a moment to read it. And if you like it, please publish it. That was how I started. Then it was years until, I don't know if it was an issue of me finding out or being late to the party or what, but many websites will pay you for your work. Mm -hmm. So in the last couple of years, I've really focused on paying opportunities. Wow. So there's some great resources online to find out who is paying. Uh -huh. Also, I like to submit to places that I read because I know their style. I have a sense of what they want. I have a sense of whether my voice would fit with what they publish. So for example, Scary Mommy is one of those um, the one that got on Huffington Post, there's, if you Google how to get published on Huffington Post, uh -huh. there's a lot on that topic because it's so mysterious. Yes. One of my favorite blog posts, I think it's by Samara Speaks, but I'm not sure, on how to get published on Huffington Post. It's like, sprinkle fairy dust <laughs> at exactly 45 degree angle and when the moon is in cancer, but then click your heels four times because <laughs> it's just very mysterious yeah. how to get on Huffington Post. I got on Huffington Post because something that I published on a website um, in the powder room, mm -hmm. 
that they syndicated it from in the powder room. So you just never know. Oh, that's neat. But I think the moral of the story is keep putting yourself out there and keep publishing. And even if you get rejected, keep trying because I must have tried to publish with Huffington Post a million times before they happened to notice me on In the Powder Room. So you just never know, but you have to keep putting yourself out there. How do you write differently on your blog post versus when you're submitting to some place like Huffington Post? That's a great question. I tend to think that topics that have more universal appeal are the ones that I would like to submit to bigger websites. Mm -hmm. If you think of what types of posts people are sharing in your social media feeds, mm -hmm. those shareable ones that anyone can relate to, I think those are the ones that, when I think I have something that might be shareable, uh -huh. those are the ones that I will submit elsewhere. Okay. And the ones that end up on my blog are the ones that are more personal, less shareable, sometimes the ones that after a while, I don't know if I've actually, I'm trying to think, sometimes it's just an issue of, oh, nobody wanted this, so it will go on my blog. Oh. but. I'm not sure if there's actually any posts that I've given up on yet. Okay. I keep thinking if I keep on trying, keep they trying. will eventually get somewhere else out of my, outside of my blog. And let's talk about the next thing. Yeah. Um, uh, you have one book. Are you considering another book, a printed permanent book? Yeah, I am considering another book. I'm waiting to figure out what I want it to be about. Mm -hmm. I know that my next book, if it's similar, will be more essays and less stories. Okay. But I want to come up with a certain theme that unifies all the stories and I need to figure out what that That's would idea. be. Yeah. Okay. But meanwhile, I feel like this book has enabled me to launch a career as a speaker mm -hmm. because it sort of establishes you as some sort of expert. Like I said, what am I an expert <laughs> on? Uh, being imperfect. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's one of them. Also, I think my background as an endurance athlete, I think I have a lot to say about confidence and mm -hmm. how it can hold you yes. back and how it shouldn't. I actually was picked last for every single team growing up. Mm -hmm. So it took a long, long, long time for me to really embrace the term athlete when it came to describing myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think I have a lot to share about that. Yep. And uh, yes, you are a writer. Yeah. And a lot of people that want a book and don't have, you know, a wonderful husband who'll publish it for them, uh, and similar to you that are working to see what type of book they might want to publish in the future, um, sometimes you get writer's block, sometimes you have trouble uh, planning for that. Do you mm -hmm. have any um, processes that you do, any tips for authors that are having trouble finding that time to write, getting that out on paper? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, recently, my friend and I decided to embark on a challenge together, mm -hmm. sort of an accountability writing challenge. Mm -hmm. She and I decided for 30 days, we're going to write for 20 minutes a day. Oh. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're writing, can be the worst thing ever. And I've definitely had some worst thing ever days mm. over those 30 days. <laughs> and we hold each other accountable through a shared Google document that we mm -hmm. both kind of check in on every single day. Mm -hmm. And we came up with a horrid punishment that okay. if you don't do your 20 minutes yeah. in any t given 24 hour period for that day, you owe. $25 to the presidential campaign of the person for whom we are not casting our vote. <laughs> so it's a pretty horrible punishment. It's also kind of public shaming. It's, it's monetary. It's yeah. monetary, but it's also, that's public <laughs> record if yeah. you support a campaign monetarily. Uh-huh, it's true. Yeah, so we don't <laughs> want, neither of us wants that to be associated with us. So that's been highly, highly, highly motivating. And what that <laughs> writing challenge has, uh -huh. to answer your question, has taught me is you can always squeeze out 20 minutes at the mm -hmm. beginning of the day, at the end of the day, in between things. I have started logging out of Facebook whenever I'm not using it. I shouldn't say whenever I'm not using it, but I'm really making an effort to log out of it because sometimes it's just a habit to go back into it. it and is. if I could add yeah. up all the minutes and hours and maybe at this point years of my life that I've wasted uh -huh. just absorbing whatever's in my feed, that time could be spent creatively. And even if I am not inspired to write, I mean, I've come up with some random stuff just to start writing for 20 minutes. Yeah. And what I have found is some of those 20 minutes that I've spent are the beginning of a first draft of something that's gonna be actually become good. Yeah. Some of it is just working that muscle. It's a lot like, you know, for anybody that runs or does any kind of sports, yep. it's flexing that muscle. You know, when I say I run five days a week, mm -hmm. I don't expect all five days 
all five runs to be good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expect one to be, oh my god, this is amazing, this is why I run. I'm going to probably expect two to be like, oh god, that was really painful, that I was tired. And I'm going to expect the other, how many does that leave me? Two. Thank you. <laughs> two. To be somewhere in the middle. Uh -huh. And that's a lot like what writing is. You just got to keep exercising that muscle and the inspiration will come yeah. if you keep on sitting at your desk and doing it. And I have been flooded this month with ideas and oh, that's great. it's just really got the momentum going a lot of drafts of things that I forgot about from months ago that I'm like I gotta dust that off and start making that into a second or third or fourth draft so so for anybody like you said struggling with where mm -hmm. to find the time find yeah. the time what to write it doesn't matter just write and carve I out 10 minutes and just write anything and what you really oh. want to write about will come I love that accountability with a buddy yeah. and a, a really strict punishment. Yeah. So uh, that's a wonderful technique, wonderful piece of advice. Now your website, I visited yes. your website, is really a great, well done website. Thank you. Lots of great information there. Do you have new blog posts periodically? Yeah. You're still blogging? Yes, I'm absolutely okay. still blogging. I generally update my blog about once a week, sometimes less, sometimes more. My blog includes, often it's a link to something I've published on a different website, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just anything that's kind of going on with me right now. Mm -hmm. I was in the habit of doing a Workout Wednesday series, mm -hmm. which I still update you, typically on Wednesdays, some sort of fitness see. motivation. Sure. And it might be, my most recent one was like seven reasons why I work out. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And um, so you mentioned public speaking. Mm -hmm. If people are interested, I'm guessing they can come through your website. Mm -hmm. Is that the best way to contact you if they're interested in public speaking? Yeah, on my website there's a little tab at the top that says contact. You can go mm -hmm. directly there to email me. Mm -hmm. um, you okay. may also email me at Pam dot S as in sugar, I-N-E-L as in llama. At, that's <laughs> Sinel is my maiden name. Pam dot Sinel at gmail dot com is a great way to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm okay. Pam Moore Writer on Twitter. Mm -hmm. On uh, my Facebook page, I have a Facebook fan page, which is um, facebook.com slash whatevs blog. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. We're going to hope for another book very soon. Please tell your father-in-law hello, and I hopefully you will have a fun time. I will. And thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your book with us, all this great information about blogging, and we can't wait to hear about the next book. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's you been bet. A pleasure. I want to thank Pam Moore for being on the show and sharing her book with us. There's no room for fear in a burly trailer. Check your local library for the books that we've talked about on today's show, and join us for more next time on Off the Page. <laughs>